But I want you to know he wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Can you shout amen? God has given you power over all the power of the devil. Shambach, and I want to welcome you to today's program. I know you can tell by the introduction that today is RW Day. We love to go back into the vault. This particular message is from Camden, New Jersey, and I was in that meeting. I, I have a story I have to tell you. You'll hear him talk about the former drug addicts that were sitting on the front row. And I have a forever impression that one of them told when he told his testimony. He said, I used to sit outside the Pentecostal church and shoot up. And he said, I would curse them as they came out of church. What a testimony. But here's the reason why. He said, I would curse them because I knew they had the power to set me free but they walked right by me and they didn't do it. You know how that hit me? That was like an indictment because so many of God's people who are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit don't know that they have a power on the inside of them that sets the captives free. And today, my dad is gonna remind us what we're called to do. Are you ready to be encouraged? I'll be back at the end to pray with you. Let's hear some of R.W. Shambach's Are You Ready for Deliverance? And everybody shouted amen. amen. I'm reading my text from this eighth chapter of Luke and just a portion of scripture to you that are listening by means of radio and you that are watching this by television in the 35th verse the devils came out of the man and the people came back to see him and I underline this in my body and in my Bible and I will read this as a text they found him sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. Demon spirits are real. If you live in New York City, you know they're real. If you live in Dallas, Texas, you know they're real. If you live in Camden, New Jersey, you know they're real. If you live in Calcutta, I don't care where it is, demon spirits are real. This has not been concocted by a church, but I have read in your hearing tonight where Jesus was confronted with a man that was demon-possessed. Let me begin by saying, and we'll get on into this, the demon spirits cried out and they recognized who Jesus was. Well, the disciples don't even know who he is yet. But these demon spirits, being fallen angels, when Lucifer was kicked out of heaven, they remembered Jesus. This is the Son of God the second person of the Trinity. Have you come to torment us before our time? All he did was walk by. Do you know the devil knows who you are? Especially if you have the Holy Ghost. Because he knows that you have the only weapon that will put him where he belongs. That devil has no business in your head or in your body. 
There's only one place the devil has any right to be, and that's under your feet. Let me say that the devil knows that there's a place of torment. I know some preachers that don't believe in a place of torment. I hear them on television. I tell my wife, turn it off. I don't want to hear that. Hell is just a state of mind. Oh, no, there's a place of torment. And the demon spirits know that they're consigned to that place. And they cried out to Jesus, don't send us there ahead of our time. But there's a herd of swine feeding yonder a legion of legion, 2,000 swine. And let me say this. This one man was possessed by 2,000 demons. What one man possessed, it took 2,000 pigs to hold. Now just ponder on that for a while. This shows the vastness of the human spirit. And I want you to know the devil is out to destroy you as a child of God. All through the Word of God, this ain't going to make you shout yet, but you will in a little while. We are told, told in the Word of God where Jesus was vexed of a devil. People were vexed of a devil. That means the devil's on your trail. Did you ever feel like something's following you? And you turn around and there ain't nobody there, but he's there. He's a thief that comes to steal, to kill and destroy. And you are vexed of the devil. The next phase is that he catches up to you and he hovers over your head and you are oppressed of the... Don't turn the TV set off now. Because some of you are oppressed. I deal with people that are oppressed of the devil. I mean, it's above your head. There's a pressure that comes down upon you. It looks like there's no way out. You can't sleep at night. You hear voices. You think you're going crazy, but you are being oppressed by the devil. And I want you to know church people are, pos are oppressed of the devil. Oppression is not possession. Vexed of the devil means he's on your trail. Oppressed of the devil means he caught up with you and he's now over your head. But the next step, and this was what he's waiting for, he wants to enter in and possess you. And he wants to domineer you and control you. Not all the time, but at times. Jesus said, at times it taketh him. Now let me begin by saying, and you that are watching this by television that are Christians, you're washed in the blood, there is no way that you can be possessed of the devil. That ought to make you shout a little bit. Because this temple is the temple of the Holy Ghost. God lives in this vessel and he will not share this temple with a demon spirit. Jesus said, a strong man keepeth his house, but if a stronger than he comes, he has to overpower him, and then he can overpower him and come in. And there is a lot of people who used to be Christians that are possessed by the devil. Are you listening to me? Don't you turn that television set off now. Because they have left down on their testimony they are backslidden. They're away from God. They got one foot in the world and one foot in the church. They're playing church on Sunday morning and living like the devil Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You wonder why you're being tormented. I want you to know you have left down the barrier. 
But when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, I tell God's people, it's not enough just to get a little tongue. Ma, 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 ha. That's all the church has. But I want you to know he wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Can you shout amen? God has given you power over all the power of the devil. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God never intended for you to run from the devil. God intended for you to run after the devil. One of you shall chase a thousand. Two of you shall put 10,000 to flight because of that anointing and the power of Almighty God that you have in your life. And today, we have been invaded from outer force, when uh, outer space rather, when the devil is out to destroy you, he's looking for people that'll go to hell with him, but I made up my mind, I'm gonna make heaven my home, and I'm gonna stay full of the Holy Ghost. Can you shout praise the Lord? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Full of the Holy Ghost. This is what it's all about. I'll never forget some years ago. This is when I was with A.A. Allen. I was preaching in the afternoon service. And we were in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I went out to get the service started. And Brother Allen came running out and he said, Brother Shambach, come with me. They brought a woman in from the insane institution. He said, I want you to help me pray. She's in that black limousine. They got her wrapped in blankets. They, she can't keep clothes on her body. I said, well, you go ahead out there. I'll be out there shortly. I said, let me go get the service started. And I had somebody start the service and lead the singing. And then I went out. I went out to that limousine and I tried to get in, but he was there. So I went around the other side and that demon-possessed woman, when she saw me get in to kneel beside her, she looked over at Brother Allen and she said, Oh, you need Shambox help. Brother Allen said, Do you know this woman? I said, I need that woman talking. That's that devil talking to that woman. And Brother Allen said, Shambach, the devil knows who you are. I said, I'm keeping good company because Paul cast a devil out of people and then God's, and then other sons of Sceva tried to cast them out and they said, Jesus we know and Paul we know, but who are you? You better not trying to cast out a devil if you're not living right and sin is in your life. This is why preachers don't preach about demon possession because demon spirits find a home in the church. They're sitting in the pew. They're clothed in the choir robes. They're standing behind the pulpit. Are you listening to me? You don't have to go out into the world to find homosexual devils. They're in the church. I'm not going to get on that world. I'm going to get on that church first. Before we can help the world, we got to clean up the church. You can't, you can't even tell who's playing the organ in some church, whether it's a man or a woman, demon-possessed, a homosexual. Oh, I know you don't like to hear it. They don't like me to air this on television, but I don't care what they like. I am not politically correct. God's given me power to cast out devils. And if you are a homosexual, I can deliver you and I can set you free. Hallelujah. Now you may not hear this from your pastor, but he got to live with you. I don't, I'm an evangelist. I come to hitch and run, I'm getting out of here. But I got to stand before God someday. I come to tell you the truth. Can you shout amen? 
Homosexuality is not <coughs> another lifestyle. It's a demon spirit. In the beginning, God made Adam and Eve. He didn't make Adam and Steve. God made man. God made woman. Are you listening to me? And some of you women laying up with, a, with another woman. You are a lesbian. Don't tell me that that's the way God made you. God made you a man. God made you a woman. And the devil has come in and he's thwarted the program of God. And now you're living in sin. You sing like Peter and James and John on Sunday morning. You hide that thing under a choir robe. But God is taking it off and he's exposing it to the church. What you do in private, God's going to splash it all over the front page. Demon spirits, are you vexed of the devil? Are you oppressed of the devil? Are you possessed? You say, you don't know me, don't have to know you. If the shoe fits, put it on. Wear the thing. I didn't come here as your judge. I just come here to preach the gospel. And if it hits you, then take it. I come with a double-barreled gospel gun tonight. Hallelujah. Thank God he set me free. I said he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound. My Jesus to see sitting on this front row are men who used to be drug addicts. But now they've been delivered and set free. And they're wrecking the kingdom of the devil. They're setting captives free. This is what God called the believer for. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name you shall cast out devils. In my name you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. God's got a special miracle for you. If you come to him and confess your sin, he will forgive you and restore you to your right mind. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord somebody. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Now, while your hands are raised and you're praising God, I want to pray for you. But you may be in a situation where you need some liberation. You need to be set free of bondage. I want to pray that prayer first. But then I'm going to ask the Lord to pour out his spirit upon you. This is the day and age when we all need to be alert to whom we can lay our hands upon and see them delivered. Do you want that power released in your life? Let's pray right now. Father, I thank you for this message. What a message of hope, Lord. It is the gospel message that sets people free from sin and every bondage of affliction, whether it's sickness, whether it's some type of addiction, whether it's torment or fear. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to break the bands of wickedness over this life. We set them free by the authority of Jesus Christ, never to go back into bondage again. And Father, for those that are watching and listening, we know, Lord, that there is a world who needs us. They need the power of God that we know, that we hold on the inside of us. I ask you for a double portion anointing to fall upon us, that when we get up in the morning, our prayer will be, God, lead us to somebody who needs to be set free, that we will talk to them, that we'll, we will minister Jesus to them, that we will join our faith with their faith, God, that will lay hands upon them and set them free according to your word. Thank you for giving us that power. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who emboldens us to not only preach the gospel, but to set people free. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. 
Amen and amen. Hey, it's time that we do the works that Jesus called us to do. Now, we're not able to play the whole message in its entirety. If you would like to get this message, you go to our website, shambach.org or donaglobal.com, and you'll be able to get it in its entirety. There's all kinds of teaching by my dad there, books that you can read. There's a book that I wrote called uh, the Anointing for Miracles. I, I kind of co-authored it with my dad. It's been such a blessing to so many people. Check out our resources and you can have a daily reading in the power of faith and in miracles. Amen and amen. Well, this is Donna Schambach. We're going to be back next week with Power Connection. But let me remind you, Jesus has a miracle with your name on it. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a thing. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter. For more information about upcoming events, Shambach School of Ministry, and how you can be a part of our worldwide outreach, visit us online at shambach.org or donaglobal.com. See you next time on Power Connection.